Now that the first one is built using the lathe, and I know a lot of you don't have a lathe, I'm going to show you how to build one just using normal hand tools, which a lot of you probably do have, as long as you have, you know, a hacksaw, uh, a file, and a vise, and I'm sure you can build this as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a, an actual bolt. So I went to Home Depot, and I picked up a six inch long bolt. So this is a quarter by 20 on the end. So you don't have to buy the quarter by 20 die for this, but you will have to thread this side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lop this end off. We're gonna shape this a little bit, smoothen it out, and we're gonna tap the side so we can have the rod portion of the check valve removal tool. So that will save you a step. These are the tools you're gonna to need to make the check valve tool just out of normal hand tools. So of course you're gonna need a drill and preferably with a half inch chuck. You're gonna need some emery cloth. I have a chamfer that goes into the drill, so that's handy. Of course, you need a ruler and a pen, just a standard square file. So this is file on all four sides. You need a round file, preferably this is less than a quarter inch thick in diameter. And then we have a standard mill bastard file, and we have a bastard file that has a little more aggressiveness on to it. We'll need a die holder. Of course, a 7 16 wrench, and of course, the infamous die, which is again, quarter inch by 32 threads per inch so you'll need to find that and of course we are going to need a vise so if you have all that you can make this tool so now we cut that we'll just take the burr off a bit We need to kind of reduce the diameter of this rod a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck it up in a drill and we'll just take some emery cloth and we'll smoothen this perfectly round with an emery cloth. So I would use it on a lathe before, but since a lot of people don't have a lathe, we'll just use a drill and we'll simulate the lathe with the drill. So we'll just take some emery cloth here. Chuck this up in the drill. And we'll just use some 600 grit emery cloth. That's just smoothing up really good there. So that's good. So let's go use the die and we'll cut this thread. So the trick here is finding which is the, the start of it. So it's a little bit tapered here on one side and it typically will tell you which way is down and which way is up. So we'll screw that in. Now we'll put some soft jaws in here. So we got some aluminum to help so it doesn't mark it up. Cut that down. And we'll use some cutting fluid here. Now the key here is to go as straight as possible down. Now this tool is a really nice tool and it's super sharp. And I guess that's why it costs $75. So I like to go down probably about three quarters of an inch. That should do it. And there you go. There, it's nicely threaded. And we'll grab a check valve and we'll show you how it fits. So there. Goes in nicely. So what we might want to do is just bevel that in a little bit back on the grinder. And we'll just check that again. Okay, the second part of this now is now that the rod is done, we need to cut the actual barrel for it. So again, back to the DOM. And we're going to cut a section off. So we just want that to stick out there. And so since this is six inches, I think if we cut this down to five and a half inches, that should give us a lot of room to work with. So let's do that. Let's cut this. So we'll go five and a half inches, make a little mark, and then we'll cut that with using the hacksaw. Now that we've cut that down, what we're going to do is make these perfectly 90 degrees on both ends and make it nice and smooth. And I just use a standard mill bastard file. So what I'm going to do is just put it up in the vise here and we'll just try to eyeball it as good as we can to um, make it nice and square. And while I'm at it, um, what you can do is these are really handy tools. The chamfer and I just put it in a drill and, and it takes the burr off on the inside. So that's pretty handy. So 
So what you want to do now is just to make sure that it actually goes through and this isn't bent. So you might have to sand this down a little bit more or kind of straighten it a bit. Uh, these bolts tend not to be 100% true, um, but this seems to work good, so we'll make this work. So what we're going to do now is make the wrench flat. So what I like to do is use a 7 16 wrench. This is a perfect size for 7 16 So what we'll do is we'll mark it. We'll make sure that the wrench flats are perfectly parallel with each other and we'll take a file and we'll just file down both sides and keep on checking with the wrench to make sure that you don't go too far. So one inch should do it right. So we'll just mark one inch and we'll go all the way around. So the one inch wrench flat should be wide enough. So here's a 7 16 wrench and we just have to flatten it down perfectly. So if you're not quite sure, what we can do is we can just put the wrench down and we can kind of eyeball it. So that would give you a rough idea on how far you have to go. Yeah, of course, it's going to take a little bit of filing. So we're going to switch to a more aggressive file. So this is actually just a standard bastard file with a little more grit. So we'll do that. Um, I'll use the hacksaw to give me some guidelines so I know how much to file. So I'm just going to go all the way across here with the hacksaw. Make sure they're roughly the same depth. So the, these lines, when I file, I know exactly how far to go. As you can see, it's almost done there. So what I'm going to do is flip it over to the other side, do the same thing, and then we'll fine tune it with the mill bastard file to make it nice and smooth. And we'll constantly check with the flats. So you can see how we're getting really close to that. So it's not going to take much more filing to get that all done. So what we're going to do here to make sure that we have it perfectly parallel, I'm just going to take a ruler. I'm going to hold it flat like that. And we're going to mount it in this vise here. And we'll just eyeball it to make sure that it's perfectly flat. We will go across with the hacksaw. So let's check this. This is 7 16 wrench. Works perfect all the way around, and I have 11 millimeter as well, and that seems to work good too. So it will work with 11 millimeter or a 7 16 wrench as well. So that's good. So now that we have the wrench flats done, we have to build the tang parts, so the grooves that fit in the check valve. Um, we only probably have to go about an eighth of an inch down, and it looks like they're about an eighth of an inch wide. So what we're going to do is similar to the other side, we're going to mark it and we're going to go down with a hacksaw. We'll go down, we'll go down and then we'll go across and then we'll, we'll make it a little bit bigger and then we'll take a file and we'll slowly try to shape it with the file. So this is where it needs a little bit of finesse and a nice fine file and take your time to get these grooves just right. Now if you mess up, you can just file it flat again and then you could try it over again. Um, we have enough room on that rod so we could, you know, make it a little bit shorter if you ever make a mistake, but I'm sure you'll get it on the first time. So let's give that a shot. So what I'm going to try to do is line up this groove with these flats. So I'm going to put it straight down in the vise here. And that looks like it's about right. And we'll mark the center line. So the center line, and then we'll go on either side. So you can see that I marked that and what we're going to do is we're going to hacksaw down the either side and we'll flip it on the side and we'll hacksaw this way. So let's do that. That's going to require a little bit of finesse. Don't rush it. So there I made the grooves down. It's kind of rough. We'll, we'll dress it all up with the file nicely. So now what we're going to do is come from the side. And we'll finish that off and then we'll finish it off with a file. So we're getting there. One side done. And now we'll do the other side. So close. So now what we're going to do is take a file and we'll dress it up really nice.
can see it's coming together. So we'll just fine tune that with the file and we'll be really good. Prongs here are about just a little bigger than an eighth of an inch wide. So if you don't have a check valve to check, these are just about an eighth of an inch wide. So we're getting close. So I keep on checking it with the... I could probably drop it another 32nd of an inch, but I think that's, that's pretty good. So what we're gonna do now is polish this up. We wanna make it look nice. So I'll go back to my drill and it helps if you have a half an inch chuck drill. We'll put it in the drill, chuck it up. We'll go back to our 600 grit sandpaper, emery cloth, and we'll just give it a nice, give it a nice polish, flip it around. Give it a nice polish there. And uh, you got a pretty nice uh, tool here. Now, if you wanted to, you can take it one step further prevent it from rusting, I have this uh, Mother's Mag Polish. And we'll do the same process. We'll put it into the drill. We'll just take a rag here. Don't need much. You can see how it gets black. Flip it around, do the other side. There you go. One professional looking check valve tool that you made yourself with only using hand tools. So we'll show you how it works. We will screw that in. Take the barrel, slide it in. See how it engages nicely into that. And then you take your quarter inch bolt, you lock it in. So you screw it into the, the lantern, use your flats and give it a turn, nice and tight. Well, there you go, a check valve removal tool that you made with hand tools. Now, if you watch my first video, I show you how to build a check valve removal tool like this using a lathe. Um, they both function the same, they both do the same job. Uh, of course, the one on a lathe is a little bit more refined, but uh, if you only had hand tools, you, know, you can make a functional check valve removal tool as well. So I hope this video inspires you to build one. If you do, please leave a comment below. And once again, thanks for watching. So apparently I suck at this, so my daughter's gonna have it go. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. If you like this video, don't be afraid to leave a like. Uh, also, I like to say I like to hear what you guys have to say down below in the comments. I'm always reading them. And uh, also hit that subscribe button. I have tons more content, lots of Coleman-related videos, how-tos, and some adventuring videos in there as well. If you like that. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Bye.